We got kind of an ugly reminder of the dangers of online dating this week um, with that whole story in Oregon. You know, the manhunt for this guy, Benjamin Foster. Uh, police said he was using a dating app to try to either get hidden or find another victim. Uh, they say that he was responsible for putting a, a woman into life support by beating her and leaving her for dead. And um, he would certainly had terrible history of beating women and going to prison for it. And now he's suspected of killing two people, and yet he's out on the dating apps, they said. So it made us think, well, maybe we should, you know, take a look again at the stats. And some of those stats seem to be increasing, that violence among dating apps uh, for people, at least according to the study from Brigham Young, seems to be on the rise. Uh, Rania Mankarias knows all about the trend because she's seen the numbers and she's seen the people behind the ugly stats. She's the CEO of Crime Stoppers in Houston and she's the author of The Online World, What You Think You Know and What You Don't. Rania, thanks for being um, with us because I think it's really important just to revisit the whole dating app thing. I mean, it's really ubiquitous, but there's some stuff that you suggest that I had never heard before. Create a new profile picture just for that app, as opposed to use the same profile picture for all. Why is that? Yeah, Ashley, what we want you to do is make yourself hard to find in a way. You know, don't use the same social media picture you use. You know, people use their business profile pictures. We don't want you to do that. We also want you to create a completely separate email account. We don't want you to be engaged with somebody that has access to your work email. If they start harassing you or emailing you repeatedly, you want to be able to cut them off or create some distance. These are, you know, minor things, but I'm surprised that people, people don't think about adding these safeguards and we want them to think about that before they jump on these dating apps. Okay, good advice. Uh, then just to find out who, you know, if they are who they say they are, you say that you should Tinder verifies users, but that you need to do your own due diligence. What kind of due diligence um, should people be doing? Listen, we want you to become a private investigator at this point. Yes, Tinder verifies users. Match works with uh, a nonprofit company to do background checks. But if you've made a connection and you're interested in taking it a step further, do your due diligence. Research as much as you can. Go on social media. Try to find this person person. Reverse image search. Make sure there's no other dating profile with the same image but a different name. Uh, we want you to consider doing a virtual call with somebody before you actually take the time to meet them in person. Listen, it's not that we want you to enter the space being paranoid, but the numbers verify, the numbers justify us putting in that effort to make sure that we're connecting with somebody we think we're connecting with and somebody who's safe to be connecting with. Yeah, I mean, in the old days, you'd be meeting in a bar and you might meet one or two, but <laughs> if you're able to meet, you know, 50 a week, uh, the, the, the law of averages suggests there might be somebody a little more dangerous in that pool. Okay, about that first meeting, we've always heard pick a public spot. That's kind of old advice that is great advice, but there's other advice that you recommend for that first in-person meeting. What is it? Yeah, you're right. Public spot, daylight if you can. But how about this? Stay on your own turf. Go to a place that you know well, that you know people there, they know you. Of course, tell a friend where you're going. Don't leave with your date and go to another private location. Um, but how? another thing to consider, share your location with somebody you know, whether it's a best friend, a friend, a family member, for the duration of that date. Just share your location so somebody can be watching where you're going. You know, if you've switched locations, use your own transportation and then stay sober. This is really important. You know, things people don't think about. We want you to go out again, meet people and have a wonderful time. But we want you to do whatever you can to keep yourself safe in the process. I like that. Stay sober. Very important. Okay. And then just about the romance scams. This isn't on the violent side, but it can be life altering. Uh, it's $500 million in 2021. Uh, what are the red flags for anybody out there who uh, wants to know in advance what they need to think about? Listen, when you're you're eager to make a connection, we're, we all want to connect with somebody. But if the person on the other line is always in crisis, uh, they need money, they need you to help them 
uh, navigate something that requires finances, if they want to marry you so quickly, if they need money for a plane ticket to come see you, those are things to be weary of. Listen, there are other things. There are users, we've actually studied this, where they'll say, look, I'm warning you. Um, people have fallen, you know, I, I've given people a hard time at points and you're, you're sitting here connecting and you're kind of overlooking that. Trust your gut, read the signs. If there's crisis, they want money. Uh, they're warning you. They talk about emotions quickly or talk about an ex all the time. Those are things to maybe make you pause. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.